Okay, so for those of you out there that are going to be studying algebra or uh, already uh, studying algebra, this is a type of problem that you will certainly encounter. And what we got going on in here is we have a rectangle and we're told that the area of this rectangle is 22. It could be 22 inches squared, centimeters squared. It doesn't make a difference. It's just uh, 22. And we have the dimensions. We have the length here being x plus 10 and the width uh, being uh, 2x. So what we want to find is the actual length and width. So again, a very typical uh, type of um, algebra problem. And what you're going to need to know here is the formula for the area of a rectangle. I'm going to give that to you in a second, but I want to uh, first let those of you out there that think you could figure this out, you know, pause the video, do some algebra, probably take you a minute or two to do this, but go ahead and put your, um, your answers, okay, uh, for the, uh, the length and the width in the comment section if you think you can get this right. And hopefully you can, but for those of you that are a little bit lost, just stick around for a couple minutes, you'll know exactly what to do. All right, but, but uh, before we get going, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tablet Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. I'm going to leave a link to my math help program in the description of this video. But if you are struggling in math, if you don't feel like you're getting the instruction you need, or maybe you just can't um, get enough hours with your math teacher, or maybe you're taking an online course and you just don't feel like you know, um, you're getting again, enough material to understand what's really going on, or maybe you want to get ahead and you're like, hey, look, I'm, I know more than what the current course I'm in. Whatever the case is, I can help you out. I've been teaching math for decades. I like to believe I have some of the most clearest and understandable math instruction out there. So if you're at the middle school, high school, or even college level in terms of mathematics, I can help you succeed in math. Now, if you're preparing for any uh, test out there that has a math section, so I'm talking about things like the GED, SAT, ACT, GRE, GMAT, ASVAB, ACUPLACE, or CLEP exam, maybe a teacher certification exam, maybe a nursing school entrance exam. I can go on and on and on. Um, I can help you prepare and pass those very important exams. If you homeschool, have a fantastic homeschool math program and curriculum, uh, definitely uh, something that you uh, really should take uh, check out to evaluate to see if it fits your homeschooling needs. And if you don't have any math notes, don't panic. I'm going to let you use mine. But uh, if you want great math, uh, by the way, the links to my math notes will be in the description of this video as well. But if you want great grades in mathematics, you've got to take great math notes. This is non-negotiable. So start improving your notes, and you'll see your grade improve as well. Okay, so uh, let's get back to this problem. Again, if you want to uh, uh, not see the solution just yet and work on this, you know, pause the video. Uh, put your answers in the comment section, but I'm going to get going now. All right, so first things first. First is we need to know what the uh, formula for area of a rectangle is, okay? So that's going to be the length times the width, right? So the area of a rectangle is the length times the width, and we know that this is a rectangle. I mean, obviously, it looks like a rectangle, but it's a quadrilateral, and we have right angles here. So, you know, of course, I'm stating it's a rectangle, but uh, this notation, you should understand uh, that uh, this figure implies a rectangle as well. But what you're going to need is the formula for the area of a rectangle. And, of course, we have all the uh, other information that we need. Now what we have to uh, have in order to solve this is some algebra skills. And that's where this is going to get really exciting. And let's go down here and see how this is going to work. Okay, so we know that the area is equal to 22 units uh, squared. So here we have the length and here we have the width. So we know that the length times the width is equal to the area, right? So let's just go ahead and multiply these two together. Okay, so we have 2x times x plus 10. Now, this is very, very important uh, to uh, stress here. When you're multiplying this times this, when you, anytime in algebra you have a sum or a difference, in other words, something, a variable, and you're adding something to it or subtracting it, you oftentimes you won't see parentheses around that expression. It's always good to put parentheses or what we call grouping symbols around uh, this expression because this is going to be very important when you multiply this times this. If you don't have parentheses in here, you can make mistakes. Uh, and let me show you exactly what's going on. All right, so we know that this times this is equal to the area, which is 22. So let's write ourselves a nice equation. 2x times x plus 10 is equal to 22. So this is really the, the setup, okay? So once you know 
the formula for the area of a rectangle, again, it's uh, length times width. We can use our variables here and this given information to set up an equation. And that's exactly what we have. Now I need to solve this equation and answer the question. But let me go back to this point here I was making. So 2x times x plus 10. Now, when I distribute 2x, this is going to be 2x times x. That's going to be x squared. And then 2x times 10, that's going to be uh, 20x. So that's the correct way to start this problem off on the left-hand side. But if you didn't have the parentheses, somebody out there could have wrote 2x times x plus 10. Okay, this is a very common mistake in algebra. So a lot of students make this mistake because they didn't put the parentheses in. So they go, oh, 2x times x, and then they'll have just 2x squared plus 10. Okay, they will forget to distribute that 2x to that 10. So again, grouping symbols and parentheses, very, very important uh, to have. Okay, so let's go back uh, to our equation. Let's focus on what's going on here. So this is 2x squared plus 20x is equal to 22. What we have here is a quadratic equation. So if you don't know uh, really the rest of these steps here that I'm going to be taking, you want to review how to solve quadratic equations. I have plenty of videos on this in my uh, YouTube channel, my algebra playlist. Again, I teach all this super thoroughly in all of my algebra courses. But let's go ahead and get into the rest of this uh, problem. So what we want to do here is set this equation equal to zero. Okay, set this quadratic equation equal to zero. So I have 2x squared plus 20x minus 22. So I'm just bringing that 22 over to the other side. And that's going to be uh, set equal to zero. Now I notice that each one of these terms, okay, has a, a greatest common factor of two. So I can literally divide everything by two here, okay? Uh, zero divided by two is zero. So remember in algebra, whatever I do to whatever, whatever I do to one side, as long as I do it uh, equal to the other side, it doesn't change the equation. So let's just write this in a simpler way. So dividing everything by two, I'm going to get x squared. 20 divided by 2 is 10x, and then 22 divided by 2 is 11. So I get x squared plus uh, 10x minus 11 equal to 0, okay? So this right here, I could solve this equation, but uh, we're just going to save ourselves a little bit of work by uh, dividing everything by 2. In other words, if I just focused on solving this equation with the 2s, I'd still get the right answer, okay? But, you know, you always want to work uh, smarter, not harder in mathematics. Okay, so at this point, I got two, uh, x squared plus 10x minus 11 is equal to 0. Uh, you got to know how to factor, okay, because this is factorable. Now, again, if you don't know how to factor, it's one of the most critical algebra skills that you need. Um, again, I have tons of videos on this in my algebra playlist on my channel and in all my algebra courses. But you have to be an expert at factoring in algebra or you're not going to do very well. There's just a lot of factoring. But here... This trinomial can be factored as uh, uh, x plus 11 times x minus 1, okay? And because this is now equal to 0, I'm stating that this times this is equal to 0. So one or both of these factors has to be equal to 0. So I'm going to set each one of these factors equal to 0. Again, if you're lost here, you need to review how to solve quadratic equations. So I have x plus 11, that's equal to 0, and x minus 1 that is equal to zero. So when I solve this basic equ equation, I get x is equal to negative 11. And when I solve this equation, I get x is equal to one. Remember in a quadratic equation, there's always gonna be two solutions and I just found them. Now let's just take a look at our answers here, okay? Now which, um, if I'm looking at the dimensions here, let's say I had, let's let me go back here and I have one of my answers is x equals a, ne a negative 11 and x is equal to 1. Now, can we really have a negative value with our rectangle? Mm, not really, right? So if x was equal to negative 11, I would be calling this negative 22. So a negative value isn't going to make sense here in terms of this particular problem because we're looking for actual positive numbers in terms of our length and uh, width. So that, by default, uh, is telling us that x is equal to 1. That is the answer. If you got that right, then that's awesome. Let me go ahead and give you a happy face with a good old 1986 flat top haircut and an A+. Plus. But let's go ahead and double check that here just to make sure we are correct. So we're thinking that x equals uh, 1 is the right answer. It appears to be right, but it's always good to double check this stuff. So if x is equal to 1, 
Uh, let's get her. Well, that was the answer. I actually uh, was remiss here. I didn't tell you the length and the width. We got to plug in this one uh, into these expressions to get the actual final, final answer. So two times x, but x is now equal to one. So two times uh, one is two. So that would be our width. And then if I have one over here, okay, let's get our length. One plus 10. One plus 10, of course, is 11. So this uh, two and 11 would be our length and width. And now Let's go ahead and just check uh, the area of a rectangle is length times width. So our length would be 11, our width would be 2. Is the area 22? It, in fact, is as it's supposed to be. So this is how we want to finish this problem up. It's always good to double check your answers, okay, especially when it's very easy to do. But um, again, I almost uh, made an error here by uh, getting too excited at this point. I guess I was just wanted to give you a nice happy face that you uh, got the problem right up to this point. But remember, we're not done, right? We have to actually go in and finish uh, the work to get the actual dimensions of this rectangle. But uh, this type of problem is a very, very, very common type of algebra problem that you're going to see. And okay? you can see it involved you know, uh, knowing basic area formulas for like rectangles and things like that. You're kind of expected to know these formulas by now at your level of math and your ability to set up an equation and of course your ability to solve uh, things like quadratic equations and knowing how to put in grouping symbols. So you can see there's quite a few different little areas in this solution that could have tripped you up, okay? But hopefully, you know, this little practice problem I highlighted those um, common, you know, areas that students make a mistake. And if you're like, oh, okay, now I get this and this video helps you out in some small way, go ahead and consider smashing that like button. That helps me out in a big way. And if you're new to my YouTube channel, hopefully you'll consider subscribing. I've been on YouTube for 10 plus years, have over a thousand plus math videos, basic uh, math to all the way up to calculus. So, um, you know, I love teaching math. I'm very passionate about uh, making videos. So I will continue to make uh, videos as long as I possibly can. And I post uh, weekly, actually uh, pretty, I post videos uh, generally Monday through Friday on my channel. So it's a lot of content. I try to mix it up, you know, geometry, calculus, arithmetic, you know. So um, again, you know, uh, if you need math help, two, two last uh, thoughts. One, please take advantage of all the videos that I've made. I've made them for you. But uh, again, my best math help will always be in my comprehensive math courses. All right, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time, and have a great day.